It's not often that you get a chance to meet your idol, someone who has achieved everything personally and professionally that you wish to achieve. Since I was young, I have wanted to work for ESPN. I told people to look for me in a few years that I was going to be on SportsCenter. Well, that is what Sage Steele does every day. An Indiana University grad, Sage has worked her way up professionally all over the country, finally settling in Bristol, Connecticut, where she anchors SportsCenter in the mornings. Coming back to Bloomington, I had the fortunate opportunity to sit down and ask Sage a few questions. Okay, first of all, tell us how you got into sports. Where did you learn about them? My daddy was um, a pretty good athlete. He played football at West Point and um, made some history there too. He was the first black to play varsity football at the United States Military Academy. So he broke some barriers, but I mean, that, that didn't matter to me as a kid. I just knew that he knew how to play football really well and introduced us to that and basketball and a bunch of other sports. But so my dad, I had two brothers. Um, younger, but you know, we, our family life revolved around sports and sports on the weekends. So it started early and it hasn't stopped. <laughs> a little bit about what, your time here at IU. What did you do here that prepares you the best for going out to the workforce? <sighs> Made it to class every day. <laughs> you know, some of those responsibilities that we take for granted, but it's, it's the beginning of teaching you, you know, things that you have to do. You're not going to graduate if you don't go to class. I mean, so. You know, if you don't go to class, you're not going to get your degree. If you don't get your degree, you're probably not going to get a job. I mean, it's just the beginning of being away from home, away from your parents where they are watching over you and doing everything for you. So it's just really becoming an adult, a young adult, and having responsibility for myself and for my own actions. Um, Class-wise, you know, I really did my best in, in school. I really did and tried to focus on, you know, not all the classes were I knew, you know, wouldn't be relevant to me as I was hopefully someday on TV. Finite. Yeah, finite math, human anatomy and physiology, dead bodies, all that stuff. But, um, you know, the writing courses, some of those writing courses, that you know, journalism type courses, um, and some of the editing that I learned to do um, of just audio tape, much less video. So there were so many things that, that I learned that I didn't even know would help me. But they had a pretty good uh, considering it was a, a really new major at the time, they had a pretty good foundation of classes that we needed to be successful. It's a lot better now. This is such a competitive industry, with women especially. There are so few jobs for so many women who want to be in this industry. What did you do to make yourself stand out from those other women? I didn't. That's the key. I didn't try to go after and make myself different or have some catchphrase or wear a certain kind of clothes. I just tried to be good and solid and accurate. And then that would stand out. Um, because not everybody, men, women, you know, it's natural we make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes at work. We happen to make mistakes at work in front of potentially millions of people. So that's hard enough. But I think when you try too hard to be different and, and be this and stand out, it's obvious. And people think it's an act. So for me, I just wanted to get to be as good as I possibly could. And that was by um, being professional doing the right things and making my good contacts and most importantly knowing my stuff, knowing my information and hoping that somebody would notice. You talked a little bit about, you said your first job, having to be at work at like 3 a.m. and then working all day long and then not sleeping and doing it again and again. When those days that you just wanted to quit, what kept you going? Because I knew I would hate myself if I didn't try. So I had to try and even though it was so hard and I didn't know if I'd make it and I didn't know if I was good enough, if I didn't try then oh my gosh, I'd have so many regrets, you know? It's okay to try and fail and be told no and finally at some point have to move on. Fortunately, I wasn't told no that many times. Um, I was, but not enough times to, get, to make me want to fully quit. So, and I thank God, obviously, for obvious reasons, but also because I can truly tell my kids that too now. You're gonna want to quit, but do you want to have that regret of not even trying? Try it, see what happens. And no matter what, you won't regret trying. What is the best advice you've been given and what like, do you just wish someone would have told you about being a woman and being in this industry and trying to make it? Like, If you had to tell me one thing you want me to remember more than anything, what would it be? I mean, I don't want to be negative, but no matter what and no matter how hard you try and how hard you work and how good you truly are, you're still going to have people who doubt you. They're still going to have people who don't think you're good enough and don't deserve to be there. Some may be legitimate reasons. Maybe they don't think in their mind that you are good enough or know your stuff enough. Or maybe it's because you're not pretty enough or because you're too heavy or you're too skinny or whatever it is. It's such a subjective business and, and whoever's judging you at that time can affect your entire life. Bosses, you know, it's not like, hey, this is the requirement. Take this test. If you ace it, you're good. If it were that easy, 
So there'd be a lot more people doing it. It's people's opinions that affect your entire livelihood. And that's scary. So you have to be prepared for constant criticism, no matter how good you are and what level you get to. It's never going to stop. Part of it. So have a thick skin. Don't read the internet a lot. A lot of it's good. Don't read that either. <laughs> because you're going to then come crashing down the very next day. But you're just know that every day you go into other people's homes, in their living rooms, in their bedrooms, where they decide to watch this show. And they have a right to have an opinion of you. And even if you know it's wrong, that's their right. So you might be doing everything the right way, but it's really not up to you. And you have to let go of trying to convince everybody that you're worthy. And I'm still working on it. I'm still, after almost 16 years, I'm still trying to let myself be okay with people not liking me, even though I think they're wrong. <laughs> I'll never be able to change it, so just be prepared that there's going to be people who don't like you and don't think you're good enough. But what do you think? What do you think about yourself? And then be content with that.